So we're here at Mobile World Congress. So uh, what, what are you having to do here? Well, for me, this, uh, this event is an excellent way of having a lot of meetings with our customers and some of our customers' customers in a very short period of time. So all these people right here coming at the Mobile World Congress, basically they're all yes. working on something that has to do with ARM. Uh, it's, it's great, yes, walking around the show, uh, whether we're talking about handheld devices, whether we're talking about infrastructure, whether we're talking about servers at the back end, then uh, there's all ARM opportunities. So how much ARM is there in the back end and then the infrastructure and all that? Uh, well, right now, as, as we speak, the answer is, is not that much. Uh, I mean, clearly in some of the baseband uh, equipment, then there is a, there's a lot of ARM technology, a lot of controllers, Cortex-R series products in those, uh, in those modems. As far as the uh, main processes controlling uh, network traffic is concerned, then uh, we don't actually have a large presence today. Uh, but some of our partners who are active in that area are here at the show, and LSI, for instance, is showing off their new 16-core uh, product, uh, which, is, which is aimed at this space, and that's a sign of things to come. Does the Cortex A57 and 53 and 64-bit uh, bring a lot into that infrastructure part? Uh, I think the 64-bit certainly happens, uh, so it certainly helps, rather. Um, obviously, right now, uh, the 64-bit silicon is some way off. It's really a 2014 phenomenon. So uh, the tablets are perhaps overtaking laptops this year, but how about this Ampart Chromebook? It's, it's proving that the ARM is, is ready for laptops too, like full oh, productivity and all that. I, I mean, certainly, uh, in, in terms of people's implementations of uh, ARM microprocessors today, there's, uh, there's no real limitation on form factor. The Chromebook is an excellent example of, uh, of that, and it's been very successful. I believe uh, very high up in the Amazon rankings for almost uh, every day since it's been launched. Uh, how soon are ARM servers uh, fully deployed in full like server parks and stuff like that? Oh, I think that is still, uh, you know, it's, it's not something which is going to change overnight. It's something which is going to unfold over several years. And uh, you know, right now, you can go out and buy some ARM-based servers. Uh, ARM-based servers for storage applications, ARM-based servers for some processing applications, uh, for some web serving and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, these are very, very early products. They tend to be based on Cortex-A9. Uh, and this year, we're going to see a generation of uh, such products based on Cortex-A15. And next year, we'll start seeing products based on our V8 64-bit architectures. So have you announced how many ARM processors have been sold in 2012? Uh, yes, in 2012 it was a total of 8.7 billion chips containing ARM processors. So how many of each kind? Uh, is it possible to kind of guess or is it a lot of small ones? And uh, well, I mean we have, we have broken that down. I mean, clearly mobile is still a very big area for us. Uh, mobile accounts for approximately half of the 8.7 billion units. And if you look within mobile, then uh, you know, in, in smartphones, you have an apps processor, you have a modem. Uh, in some of the simpler phones, you might just have a modem. You also have uh, connectivity devices, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, these, these sorts of uh, applications, all counting within, within mobile. Non-mobile, uh, consumer products like the camera that you're, you're using uh, at the moment, uh, through to big televisions and so on, through to the infrastructure that sits in people's homes, ADSL modems, uh, power line modems, uh, the, these sorts of things. And then on into uh, white goods, brown goods, industrial products and so on. That accounts for the remaining uh, half of the 8.7 billion units. So the ARM business uh, is going quite well, right? I mean, uh, the whole market is, uh, I mean, uh, well, what can you say about the ARM business? I, I mean, I can say that ARM is, you know, we're very fortunate. ARM is very well positioned in a world where uh, smart electronics is becoming more and more part of people's everyday lives. Obviously, if you come to a show like this, it, it hits you in the face and you can, you can see all these products. But behind all these products, uh, there's a lot of technology, uh, and that technology is getting smarter, uh, and people are embedding more microprocessors, and every year which passes, 
more and more of those microprocessors uh, are, are becoming ARM, I see all the non-ARM microprocessors and, and the new opportunities as, uh, as opportunities for our business in the future. Can you talk just a little bit about how, how it works with the licensing and all that? How, how much does it cost uh, for a chip maker or is mm -hmm. that basically there aren't, there aren't really, there are no secrets. Uh, I mean, this information is, is available, but, uh, but it's very hard to generalize. Um, we've sold uh, over 900 licenses now to 320 odd semiconductor companies, and uh, you know every one of them is a little bit different. Uh, in in reality, in a given quarter, we are signing perhaps 30 odd licenses, and um, you know that's not really very many in a quarter. Uh, and so each one can be a, a little bit bespoke. But in principle, we, we're paid some money up front, and about half of um, our revenue is associated with uh, the downstream royalty when people ship chips. And how huge is the R&D investment? How, I mean, you, you need to get like the 14 nanometer, the 12 nanometer, all these yeah. crazy future technologies designed, uh, right? Uh, absolutely, and it's expensive business, and that's why over the last several years we've been growing our headcount significantly by 10, 12, 13 percent per annum uh, for the last several years. That's been fairly consistent. Uh, it's on the back of the fact that we're positioned uh, very well for the future uh, and we're able to grow our investment there in R&D at the same time as increasing our margins. And the, the big uh, advantage is the ARM community, right? Like the way you work with all these partners. Certainly, the, the, the ARM business model is, is the key advantage. I mean, obviously, I would say that we, we produce the best microprocessors there are. However, you know, in addition to that, uh, this business model where we have a community of over 300 semiconductor licensees, an expanded community of a thousand odd and more companies in the, the ARM ecosystem, this is a, a, a very good environment for people who are buying ARM-based chips and building systems around those ARM-based chips because you know, they have a huge choice. Uh, there's a lot of diversity in the chip supply uh, and there's choice and diversity in the supply of those technology components which sit around the ARM microprocessor either on those chips or as software components in those systems. So there are some huge challenges coming up, right? Uh, you want to get smaller, and uh, faster and 14 nanometer pin fed. I mean, all these things are kind of like unknowns, no? a little bit. It's still in, a lot of research that needs to in, be. Indeed, the semiconductor industry is a, a fascinating place. It, it is hard work. You don't get something for nothing. And uh, you know, as consumers, we're benefiting hugely from the progress in technology. But you know, clearly, there needs to be investment and 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 work to uh, to realise that progress. So. As we look forward to 20 nanometer products, 16 nanometer, 14 nanometer, yes, there are massive investments which have to be made across the industry. ARM plays a part in that uh, and we all benefit uh, as a result.